we're back today. We're going to be doing the fans of loving. So we're going to mix things up a little bit, turn the tables instead of having the fan base questions going to the stars of the show. We're going to have one of the stars of the show ask some very specific questions about our fans. Um, we actually still have our super fan here, Trisha Shatney. Say hello, Trisha. And Trisha has collected a wonderful cast of characters here. And we're going to take a moment to introduce each of them shortly. But first, uh, the man of the hour, our own Chris Markentel, Curtis Alden from the show. Hello, Chris. Uh, hello. That would be me, I guess. <laughs> Are you somebody else? Do you want to be somebody else? Fresh out of the deprivation chambers, folks. OK. Yes. So we're going to go around. Um, Trisha, would you like to say a little something, since you're the super fan? Uh, most people know the story by now. I started watching Loving when I was 12 years old. I watched the entire series. Um, Susan Keith and James Kybert are my favorite actors, of course, with Chris, too. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I just, I, I love the show. I followed it. I searched them out when the internet came about. I found Susan, we started talking, and now we're all friends, and it's wonderful. It all is. our friends, every one of them, they're all our friends. All right. <laughs> let's move, <laughs> let's move uh, to Chuck Snitchler. As quickly as we can. <laughs> Chuck, what are you, where are you from, and when did you start watching Loving? Okay, I'm from Hobart, Indiana, which is like right near Chicago. And I started watching Loving from the beginning, the two-hour movie, when I was 12. Oh, my goodness. And I, start, I watched it for the entire run, and I was sad when they turned it into the city. Oh. But I still watched. Did you watch it all the way through to the end? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then next is Chad. Chad, what is your last name? Nash. Oh, hi, Chad. Hi. Okay, yeah, my thing was, I same thing. I watched it from day one when, you know, the two hours, you know, and I was like 12 years old, you know, actually 13. I'm sorry, I lose my age sometimes, but I was 13 years old. And, you know, I watched, you know, I did watch it for the first couple of years, I would say, you know, I mean, I did watch when Chris was playing Curtis as well, you know, and then, you know, I wind up actually going to the studio, like wait outside, like from 1987 to 90, I would say, you know, to see actors come out the studio get their pictures and stuff like that but then so so you're a local boy i mean you're uh from new york yeah mm -hmm. awesome all okay. right and now mr matt kono hello <laughs> <How are> you? <laughs> i'm doing fine i i currently live about two hours northwest of des moines iowa Okay. I started watching Loving about 1988 when Lisa Peluso took over the role of Ava um, because I had seen her when she was on Search for Tomorrow. And I remember that show, yeah, yeah. I did and we lived we lived in an area of Iowa that did not pick up Loving for for the entire run. In fact, our market, the Quad City market, never aired it. So wow. I started following it on uh, in Soap Opera Digest and whenever I go visit my grandparents outside of Des Moines then I would be able to watch it down there and as the show went on I was asking people in other parts of Iowa and Illinois hey can you can you can you record it for me because I you know so I watch it two weeks at a time you know this was binge watching before we know what binge watching is today right. but <laughs> you, you were watching I, Guiding Light as well though huh I got I got Guiding Light up on the wall. I got As the World Turns over here, and Another World, and all my children behind me on the wall. Yeah, I was a Guiding Lighter in a, As the World Turns. That's very look at all that, and and you get your license plate up there for Corinth. Yep. That's all. That's cool. Oh my God. <laughs> How long did you have that on your car? For about four years. Okay. Did you ever get pulled over like the cops pulled you over and said? Oh okay. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he said your name's Curtis Alden. <laughs> <laughs> He's always up to something. That uh, Curtis. <laughs> driver's license. All righty, who do we have uh, next? Uh, all the way from Paris. Is it the business of Paris or are you somewhere else in France? No, I'm uh, near from Paris, yes. Near, okay, mm. near, nearby. It's Christian. Hello. Yes. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm a fan from uh, Paris, uh, Europe, and France, and um, I watched when I was 16 years old, 
and uh, um, the show had uh, five years of uh, delay. Delay. Uh, so we were very late from the United States. So we we don't we have. We had to be careful not to spoil ourselves <laughs> right. with the soap opera magazine and all the stuff. But that's it. But you were great because people that went there after the show was gone could still feel really good about themselves. Go over and they're still like a huge star five years later, right? Yes, yes. And the show was very popular also in Italy. Yes. There were a number one show uh, up there and most of the cast uh, went uh, to Italy. Uh, I'm a little curious. What uh, yes. what did I sound like in French? <laughs> pretty good, I think. Pretty good, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, I, I will have to, to search uh, an episode, uh, one episode, uh, and I will um, I will send it to you. Did, yes. did you ever uh, meet the? I mean, do you ever get to meet the people who do the voices? Do they have fan things there where they meet the people? Yes, they have uh, fan things, but I I never met them. No. But they are very popular in France as well as in Italy. They are, they are also um, actors from theater or from um, uh, TV series. They are doing the same thing. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yes. The dubbing uh, also. I would think it'd be very hard to dub something over. That seems like it would be quite a skill. But... All right, Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi. I'm Eric Henwood Greer. I'm from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. I started watching Muppets around 1991. There was a crossover with All My Children, and that hooked me on it. And then I watched all the way through to the end of the city. And I started to catch up with old episodes when I could find videotapes of them and YouTube. And yeah, that's it. Okay. All right, Mary, Mary Martell, how are you? I'm good. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I was just calculating in my head. Um, well, I've watched, I watched Loving since the very beginning, but I have to confess, I've been a Chris Markintel stalker for, <laughs> I think I've calculated 40 years. No. Yeah. No. Oh yeah, I think I was 17 when I started watching you on Guiding Wait a minute, Life. you're... You just told your age, made? Mary. Would that... <laughs> I had no idea. I always think of you as like 18 years old. Oh, thank you. Let's all just think of me as being 18 I'll years old. I'll think of you as 18. I'm only 20 myself, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, um, I I watched all of I watched all of Loving. I have to confess, I quit watching it for a while when Chris left. But oh. then my sister, who was a housewife, said, "Hey, I think that guy you know is back on Loving." And so then I had to start watching it again, and I really hoped he was the murderer that killed off the whole cast, and I was very disappointed. Well, I hoped it as well, because uh, that means I would have been there till the end, which would have been great. <laughs> I was so excited. I'm like, let him be the villain. Let him be the bad guy of all time. <laughs> it was a little too, uh, you know, a little too obvious, though, for me to be the villain. Yeah. All right. So oh, and Chris, I'm in Chicago, by the way. Oh, Chicago. Uh, Chicago. 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 But I went to Iowa State, Matt. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, keep it keep it together, Mary. Yeah. All right, so Chris. Here's my question. We all know you watched. We all know you enjoyed it. But I'm curious, was there a particular scene or uh, storyline that moved you over the course of time? Something that, I mean, why, did, why do people watch it? You're not just watching it for the escapist value. I know that people are watching it because, you know, they cry as well as laugh or whatever. Is there any, anybody who has seen anything that uh, particularly moved them during their time? I thinking. know one that leaped out with me was when Leo and Shana had their daughter who had Down syndrome. I thought that was an avenue that no other show had gone down. And did you and think so that I, they had actually, did they, did they approach it from a good perspective as a person? Did you know anyone at that time with Down syndrome? Did it give you a different I, perspective? I did not know anyone who had Down <clears> syndrome <throat> at the time, but I just, I just thought it was a, it, it was a rather brave step for, any show to do because we always we always assume when we watch daytime that any child turns out to be nearly perfect 
but it was a good change for the writers of Loving to incorporate a child with Down syndrome to be born. Nice. And not to draw away from the story, but we did have an addition to the, the square. So let's say hello to Robert. Robert, you got to turn your microphone on. Hi, Robert. On. There he is. <clears throat> there he goes. I mean, thank you. Hi, and we, had ju we just had a moment where we went around and just had everybody say a little bit about themselves and sort of how long and their experience of being a loving fan for how many years and, and where they where they currently reside. Um, for me, I my uh, my grandfather's cousin um, was a technical manager for all the ABC soaps in oh. uh, New York. And um, he introduced me to the sets of Corinth and Landview and Pine Valley and uh, Ryan's Hope when that was on the air as well. So I was very fortunate wow. as a kid, as eight years old, to get the opportunity to go visit all those sets. Oh, was he in the booth? Was he uh, pressing the buttons? Is what was yeah, his doing? name was Dick Reed. He was a technical manager. Um, and he, he was, he worked for all the ABC soaps and then he, um, he went to Good Morning America and then he retired. He used to take me as a kid and, um, it was pretty interesting. Um, I can give you a little synopsis before Cap Cities, after Cap Cities left and it was Disney, they used to have all these pastries and juices and coffees for everybody to have. When, once it went to Disney, that all went away, you know, and I was, I was like, wait a second, we're, why, why aren't we going to the commissary? Where's my was pastries? Perfect. Yeah, right. So as a kid, I was so excited to go around to all those things and um, do that. Um, so for me, it was a lot of fun as a kid, you know, just to go to four different towns in, in less than four hours, you know what I mean? We would take the tram from... Um, the old armory building um, that was one life to live and then we would go to the west side to go to all the shows it was a lot of fun that's actually where we started uh, back in the day in, yeah. in the building and Lo loving was there yeah and we um it was pretty cool I, I well i'm in the birthplace of the soap opera i live in chicago you know there's a lot of history here um and i can see why a lot of the shows came from the midwest because it totally if you look at a lot of the streets here in Chicago and all the suburbs, you can see why they became those locales, just middle of America. So that's where I'm from. And I, um, I, started, I started watching Loving, I think in 88. And I, I actually watched all five soaps at one point, uh, but I, I never really got deeply invested in General Hospital. It was mostly all of Agnes's shows, more or less. Well, Chris had just posed a question back to the fans um, about um, that they were, you know, the intrigue and all the the, the, the romance and whatever, but were there actually storylines that impacted them or had, you know, that, that seemed like they uh, they stood moved out them. for them, moved them in a, in a different way. Or, and, or they could relate to in some way. Or... <clears throat> and Matt was sharing the storyline of having a child with Down syndrome that he thought that that was uh, remarkable that they had taken that opportunity to highlight that as a, as, as, something that you don't normally see as he said imperfection certainly on these shows there was so many models and beautiful people that it was nice to to see here's a real life situation that you can share how that would be and I, one of the best storylines for me personally from loving was um louis the garbage man you know getting with kate rescott that's one of my favorite stories um, because no, I agree. yeah I, that was one of my favorite stories because you know a lot of times um it, the soaps get glammed up and that wasn't a glamorous story at all yes and we got to true. see you know a middle-aged romance going on and you know her having cancer but him having such a blue-collar job as a garbage man you know when kate was going through her her cancer my father had cancer oh. around the same time that she did, and unfortunately he passed away. So that kind of oh. hit close to home for me. And it was really a touching storyline, seeing Kate go through that, and then, you know, seeing my dad go through it. So it kind of hit close to home. But um, that, that was a storyline that really stood out for me, you know, personally, actually, since it kind of affected me with my dad. So, yeah, it was really well done storyline. Did it give you an opportunity to help sort of give you a perspective that you might not have had? Yeah, yeah, it kind of, you know, gave me, you know, a little more perspective, you know, I mean, he was going through it, he had it a lot worse than she did, you know, and she survived, you know, thank God, but, 
yeah, it gave me a little more perspective because it's something, you know, never dealt with before. So it kind of gave me a little more perspective on how to deal with a family member that has cancer. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, Bernie died so young and that was the only Emmy he ever won for that show. And that was the only Emmy the show really won for an actor, you know, or they oh. never got recognized in writing or anything else. But I, I just loved that he won, you know, and I don't know if there was like maybe some ties to him from his previous roles, Johnny Ryan, you know, but he was just a lot, he loved being an actor and he loved being, you know, in loving, he did. In the beginning, you know, we've talked about this in some of these other fan chats. It, it, it was about something and it was about the, the uh, rich and miserable Aldens and the poor but happy Donovans. And that Donovan family really was very centered, and and all really good actors. And I and I, I miss that. I miss that dynamic as it as it became more like other shows, and and kind of morphed into you know like uh, what what's the next crazy thing we can do, you know? Well, yeah, and a lot of folks today don't really have your you know average mid -Amer middle American family. I mean, you no, know, the young, the restless. It's the Abbots no, no. and you know, the Newmans. Now it's just all money, power, glamour. One thing I did always like about soap operas back in the day is they were so theatrical compared to other TV. Like you'd have longer scenes. They'd be more about talking, similar sets, all that sort of aspect. So. Well, they call them soap operas because they're right. larger than life. I did Christian. this crazy class in college about soap operas. And about how there's two different types of soap operas. There's like the dark one and the light one, and you know just the the way that they communicate and the the um, storylines go. It was kind of interesting. <coughs> Christian, well, how about you? Well, I'm just trying to make sure everybody gets a chance at the table. Sorry, right. I keep cutting you off. But anything from you, here? Christian? Let's how about see. a favorite? How about a favorite storyline that that touched you on some level? <laughs> There were so many. There, there was the Vietnam Memorial with uh, right. uh, James Skyber. Um, and uh, there was also um, uh, Lily Slater storyline. Um, yeah. Uh, Jenny, Jenny Ashi and then uh, Britt Elfer. It was uh, very moving. Here there are a lot, uh, plenty of places of uh, memorial. We had uh, two wars and and one well, that was won thanks to the Americans. <laughs> it was actually the French that started out in Vietnam, wasn't that's it? That's true, it was. I think what I loved about loving, I think that's the, the, the other thing is, it was a half an hour, you know? And a half an hour is so much easier for a fan to really get into, you know? And um, what I loved Digestible. about... Digestible. Yeah, and what I loved about the medium, and I still do, and it's it's really a, not about stunts, you know. It's really about characters talking. But we got in. I got into loving too. I thought the college the college campus thing was so cool. I always wondered whatever happened to Alden U. Well, when that, did it start turning to dynasty? See, yeah, you know? I think I think when Doug Marlin yeah. died, uh, everything just kind of changed. You know, it, it became I don't know. I think uh, Agnes stepped back a little bit, but yes, it was about a college town. It was about the uh, the Aldens and the Donovans. Is that why you guys were kids? Is that why they cast so many younger people because of the college town? Well, every every <laughs> show has its uh, has its mix of you know. There's the young storyline. It usually comes out in the bathing suits in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the older storyline, and you know, like Louis. It, 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 I, I mean, if I was watching a show, I mean, I, I, I really enjoy watching those people. I enjoy watching the older people. And now I am one. <laughs> are, are you watching these? Uh, are you watching the three that are left? Anyone? Yes, I still yeah. watch them. Yeah. No entertainment. Not in the recent, not in the recent weeks, but. After they came back, I kind of like stayed away from them. I've been going through and looking at uh, tapes lately, and, and I found one that that had all sorts of loving stuff from the early days, and it had and it said uh, Chris on Regis Philbin, and you know it was from my mother's archives, and I and I took it and I was transferring it, and I realized she'd recorded it over uh, with Young and the Restless the entire tape. <laughs> <laughs> 
knew I liked your mom. <laughs> <laughs> one of my good one of my good friends. Her name is Louise Schaefer, and she was one of your writers for Loving for about a year and a half. Well, here's another question: How many of you have actually acted? I want to pursue an acting career. I was 20 years old, you know. What was your first acting job? What did you I do? Act I would actually say it was One Life to Live. I mean, I did extra work on New Jack City just for one day right before, you know, One Life to Live, as well as Bonfire of the Vanities. And then I worked oh, on One Life to Live for, for a couple, for a number of years over there, you know, doing wow. extra under fives. So it's like a week before my birthday, which is January, you know, like the last week of January, I actually get a phone call from the casting director at all my children. And I got to be, you know, work, you know, as a what's called, I worked as a orderly behind Valley, behind Valley Hospital, as well as one time a director on the show upgraded me for an under five. You're talking about like two years after working at all my children just upgraded me right on the spot. And it was like, whoa, you know. So it was like, you know. Okay, and also, but what, what, what was your line? And he tells me like this, all right, you know, I want you, you know, like your guys pack up, you know, do this. And you tell them, all right, right, enough already. This box is getting too heavy. And then you walk off. So it was like, but with that in mind, I have to say, since it's last minute, you have no time to be nervous. Robert, you, you uh, were around in your whole life. Did you get brought in for anything? No, I never did, but um, I will tell you this is a story. I um, went to college for a television production, and I desperately wanted to write for the soaps. It was a weird story. You know, the internships at a soaps back then were, they really wanted people from NYU and stuff like that. They really didn't want them from other colleges. It just, it just seemed like that was their fellowship with Disney at the time, and um you know, I came close to um, getting um, One Life to Live. And, um, you know, I didn't get picked. I went to Sesame Street instead. Uh -oh. So I'm not, co I'm not complaining. Now, it was fun. Can you tell me how to get there? Yeah. <laughs> it's on Broadway. <laughs> That's where our offices were in the ASCAP building. But then it was all, all the studios were in Kaufman Astoria in Queens. <laughs> Any, anyone else? Eric, um, Christian, anything, Mary, acting yeah, stuff? No? Um, nothing professionally, but I was always the one that if they needed some girl to do something crazy in a skit <laughs> all through college and high school, it was always like, get Martell, she'll do it. Went, okay, what do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm a good improv. I, I studied theater at university for about three years, and then oh, I changed wow. majors. So I did a lot of musical theater. So, Matt. <laughs> Uh, you, yeah. you haven't been in the uh, loop here for a while. You uh, have anything uh, to, to add to our conversation here? Uh, I was going to mention that as far as acting goes, I've acted in several community theater productions up in Mason City, Iowa, and I've directed some shows there. Oh, wow. Are you a singer? Not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> well, were you in musicals? Not particularly singing well. <laughs> I was. I was. No, I was not in a musical. No. <laughs> what What shows did you do? We We did a couple shows from Neil Simon. Uh, one of them, uh, Forty Five Seconds from Broadway. Uh -huh. We did a couple tributes to the Carol Burnett show. Oh, I'd love that. Love that. Show. We did Rowan and Martin's Laugh In. Oh wow. Uh, we did. All I really need to know, I learned in kindergarten, <laughs> which was which was based on a children's book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we did a we did a a nod to some local architecture uh, called Work Song: Three Views of Frank Lloyd Wright, because Mason City is home to the last standing hotel designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah. Wow! Who oh, knew that? Look at that as a trivia bit. So, uh -huh. one other question. Uh, so, you've been watching you Guiding Light, Another World, and Loving, uh, which are three shows that I was on. Did you uh, when 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 were we watching Guiding Light? <laughs> I was watching Guiding Light from about 1987. Okay, so, so was, later. Uh, yeah. All right. I, I was there in 81, so I was just curious how, how disappointed you were when, when I took over for, uh, for uh, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
go quite back that far because we were watching we were watching another world which locally was saddled halfway in between all the other shows that were on CBS and ABC. So it's like you, you got to miss out on half of Guiding Light if you wanted to watch Another World. Yeah, I, I found that um, most people stuck to one network. You know, they would watch all the ABC shows. They would watch all the CBS shows. Yep, CBS. Peggy, yep. you, you were a CBSer? Yeah, I remember. So it was funny thing was Chris was showing me one of his clips once on TV. I actually remember that episode on The Guiding Light with Morgan and um, Kelly oh, when and he had he kind of acquiesced for true love to take root again. <laughs> Do you feel feelings for it? You can. Why don't you just say it? I know it. I can say it, but I just don't feel like talking about it. Especially here. Especially tonight. Well, I do. So come on, sit down. Trudy. Come on. Look, let's not get into some heavy discussion about Morgan, please. I don't want to talk about Morgan, Sam. I want to talk about you and how you feel about it. We have talked about it, and I'm going to tell you the same thing I told you then. Any feelings I have for Morgan are wrong. The bad boy <laughs> turns sweetheart. I just remember, Chris, you telling me that um, when I wrote you a letter, I think that you told me this when I met you the first time, you were like, so Mary, he goes, you felt so bad for my character because I had, I was, I had such, you know, problems on Guiding Light. He's like, if you would have felt sorry for me about six months sooner, you would have written to Tim Werner when it was Kevin Bacon <laughs> <laughs> instead of me. Does everybody have their fan picture of Chris? <laughs> oh, my gosh. The other ones. Oh, look, okay. look at you, little face. Look That's me that. with my mullet that Chris will never let me forget. <laughs> well, I, believe, I think I had one at that time, too. The mullet, the mullet years, and <laughs> Yes. I have this book called The 25 Years of ABC Daytime. I remember it well. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, you guys, so. I found all kinds of crazy sh Look what else I found. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I found the front page wait, from wait, the here we go. on the day go, that fan I base. visited. Oh, my. It. Matt's got his T-shirt. We have a soap memories at Shermwinner.com, and I'll put that on the, uh, the fan page, or uh, Trisha, you can put up there. If you've got some memorabilia or something, or you want to show your wall, just because uh, I'm trying to... Because he'll edit, he'll put it in. I want to do more of these. The more I see people subscribing and interested in this, go over to the YouTube site and subscribe, and tell your friends to subscribe. I see, Trisha, you've got like 700 fans, so... <laughs> uh, on your fan page, I believe you have 700 uh, likes or, you know, people who've subscribe okay. to your fan page. I'll, I'll tell all of them. We have some lined up. We're trying to get... What are we trying to get, Tricia? We're trying to get Susan and James. Shana's men, we wanted to call it, and get uh, James Carroll in there as well, right? Yes, definitely. Um, I also want to do the uh, the core four, the original uh, kids, kids of Loving, yeah, which would be me, Jenny Ash, Susan Walters, and uh, um, uh, Lauren Marie Taylor. Okay. Tell all of them. Get them over there to subscribe. And uh, that'll inspire me to do more of these, get more. And, I, and then I did talk to Lisa Brown about doing a Guiding Light one. She's, she's not particularly interested, but I'll keep plugging away. Um, she no, said, dude, that would be awesome. <laughs> Nola. I, Nola was me, man. She I was yeah. crazy. <laughs> I crazy, wanted crazy. to be Nola. <laughs> we gonna do, can we do a closer on this just so I can say goodbye to everybody? Or what are we doing? Yeah, do that. All right. This has been so much fun. Let's uh, have a big thank you for everyone. Trisha, Matt, Chad, Chuck, Mary, Eric, Christian, and Robert, who came in a little late, but he came in strong. <laughs> All right. And of course, to the ever amazing Christopher Markintel for being the most Yay. amazing Curtis Alden ever. Yay. All right. We hope there'll be many more of these. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for the Bye. Bye. Thanks, Trisha. Bye. See you in the next one. Okay, Bye. thank Bye. you. Bye. Chris, I've got all kinds of things to share with you. Oh, boy. <laughs>